Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to teach you five different ways to strike a ball. first technique is striking the ball with power. So for this technique, we're gonna need a straight run up because we're getting a lot of momentum behind the ball. And for the run up, we wanna take three or four long strides. This is how we generate momentum and we put all that force behind the ball, which is gonna increase the shot power. A Couple of key points for your planting foot. You wanna make sure it's pointing towards your target. That's gonna help you with your accuracy. Also, as we plant our foot, we wanna have a slight bend in the knee and really flex the quadriceps. Engage those muscles so that we can increase our balance and stability, which is gonna give you a solid base to swing through the ball. Also making sure we have maximum backswing. So we flex our foot as high as it can go. My foot's gonna be around hip height and then I can swing through the football. If my backswing is low, there's not much distance between my swing and the ball, so not a lot of time to generate momentum and force behind the ball. But if we maximize the backswing, we have a huge range of motion, and that's all going through the middle of that football. In terms of the area of the foot we're gonna be using to strike the ball, it's right on the instep, very dense part of the foot that's gonna generate a lot of power. And we wanna be striking through the center of the ball. Another thing that's really important is to lock the ankle, which means flexing all of the muscles around the ankle joint so that it's rigid. So that as you make contact with the ball, the ball isn't causing your ankle to bend or lose rigidity, which is gonna decrease the power in the shot. So really flex the muscles around the ankle so that you can keep it stiff. And as you strike the ball, it stays firm. So it's a clean, solid striking surface to propel the ball in the back of the net. Then as we strike through the ball, following through towards our target, and then you've got two options here. If you see players like Harry Kane or Wayne Rooney, something they would always do is stay on their planting foot as they follow through the ball. This is only gonna work if you have a lot of stability and balance in that planting leg. So practice this one, but if you find yourself off balance as you're striking it, you're gonna lose a lot of power. So if you are losing your balance, come off of that planting foot and land back on your kicking foot. This allows you to keep your chest over the ball through the entire action until the striking technique is complete. The next technique is curling the ball. This is where we generate spin, allowing the ball to move from right to left if we're a right-footed player, or left to right if we're a left-footed player. So for this technique, we need an angled approach to allow us to be able to get around the ball. We're gonna be twisting our hips. This is gonna help us generate that spin. So approaching the ball from a 45 degree angle is gonna help us wrap our body across the ball. So as we approach the ball, once again, three or four strides to generate momentum. Then we're gonna place our foot beside the ball. We wanna have a slight bend in the knee to help with our balance and stability. Then as we strike the ball, we're gonna be using our instep again, but slightly lower because we wanna be increasing our contact area on the ball to maximize the spin. This is gonna help us add more movement to the strike. And we're gonna be connecting on the ball on the lower right-hand side, flexing our foot upwards. So not only do we get some spin from right to left, but we also get a little bit of top spin to add some dip to the strike as well. So the rotation of the ball isn't directly spinning like this or directly spinning forwards. It's kind of in between like that. That's gonna allow it to move from right to left and also a little bit of up and down. Then as we follow through, we're wrapping across our body still, twisting our hips, and then we're stepping all the way across our planting foot. You can either come off of your planting foot onto your striking foot, or you can simply step across and stay on your planting foot. Try both techniques and see which one works best for you. A couple of extra tips here. As you plant your foot, because we're in an awkward position, facing away from the goal, Having the arm out for balance is gonna help you with your stability on that planting leg. And then as you strike the ball and your swinging leg goes across your body, whip that opposite arm in the opposite direction. That's gonna help you generate even more momentum to put more spin on the ball. The next technique is the traveller. So using the outside of our foot to generate spin on the ball. 
So why would you use the Traveller? You could use it if the ball is on your weak side. Instead of using your weak foot, you can step into the ball and still use your strong foot to get the shot away. So you might be able to add some more power, more accuracy if you're using your dominant foot. We need to make sure we've got a 45 degree approach to the ball. Couple of steps into the ball. This time, as we plant our foot, we're still gonna have a slight bend in the knee for stability, but we need to make sure our foot is slightly further away from the ball. This is gonna leave enough room for our strong foot to come across our body, connect with the ball and follow through. So we're gonna be using the outside of our foot just to the side of the laces here. Nice dense part of the foot. And we're gonna be stepping through the ball, striking on the lower left side. Again, lifting our foot as we strike the ball to create a little bit of topspin as well. The key with this one is to have the arm out for balance. And as we strike, make sure we follow through towards our target, come off of our planting foot and hop towards our target as well. This is gonna help you add momentum. Next up is the half volley, striking the ball on the bounce. This is a really valuable shooting technique to have if you're around the edge of the box. Instead of taking your touch, hitting it first time can actually catch the goalkeeper off guard. And you can generate a lot of power with the half volley because you're putting a lot of momentum through the ball. And with the added bounce, there's a lot more energy going through the ball and you can end up putting so much power and velocity behind it. So as we're striking the ball, we need to make sure our eyes are fixated on the middle of the ball. Planting foot is the same, slight bend in the knee, facing towards our target. But the key here is to strike the ball as low to the ground as possible. We want our technique to be as close to a normal power strike as possible. So if the ball is close to the ground, the swing is very natural. If the ball is up in the air, we have to adjust our hips, come from a different angle. But if we connect with the ball low to the ground, it's a very natural striking technique. We're gonna be using the laces this time. So instead of the instep, we're coming across a bit to the laces. This is the flattest and widest surface area, which will give you the cleanest strike on the ball. Hitting through the middle, generating some backspin so that it glides through the air nice and straight and can pick up a lot of speed. And as we follow through, either coming off of our planting foot or landing back on our striking foot. Chest over the ball to make sure we're keeping it below the bar. Arm out for balance locking the ankle and staying disciplined through the strike until the ball is in the back of the net. And the fifth and final technique is the knuckleball. Not as essential as the first four techniques, but if you've got this one in your locker, it can cause a lot of problems for the goalkeeper. So a few key points with the knuckleball, the run-up wants to be straight on. We're putting a lot of momentum directly behind the ball. Three or four strides behind the ball and then that step right before we plant our foot is a vault step. So we come up onto our toes and then into our planting foot. This helps us generate momentum behind the ball. The goal with the knuckleball is to generate as much force behind the ball and then minimize the follow through after the ball. So vault step, plant our foot beside the ball, planting towards our target, and then we're gonna be using an area of the foot very high up on the instep. This is the most dense part of the foot, so it's gonna allow you to generate maximum force through the ball. And the area of the ball we wanna strike is just below the center. But the key here is we wanna strike upwards as we make contact with the ball. We're not striking through the ball as we would do with a power shooting technique or downwards on the ball, but we're contacting the ball in the middle and then we're lifting our foot and we want the ball to punch off of our foot. The goal of a knuckleball is to minimize any spin so that it wobbles in the air and becomes really unpredictable for the goalkeeper. As soon as we make contact with the ball, we wanna minimize this follow through. And the way I like to minimize my follow through is as I've lifted my foot, quickly step back down on that striking foot. Making sure we keep our chest over the ball as we strike it. If we don't keep our chest over the ball, chances are we might lean back, we might strike too low on the ball, and that's just gonna generate backspin. So keeping our chest over the ball, striking up, and canceling the follow through. So there we have it, five different shooting techniques that you can use to score more goals in a match. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash the like button, hit that subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Mouth, 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 mouth.